Hey folks, Mr. Math Blog here, and this lesson is on common denominators. Okay, so this is lesson 6-4 in the book that I'm following, and your common core lesson is CC4NF1. And here we're going to extend our understanding of fraction equivalence and ordering. And our essential question is how can we, we write a pair of fractions as fractions with common denominators? Okay, so after this lesson we should be uh, we should be pretty good at this. Okay, and then uh, to the teachers, you guys, we're going to be folding some papers, so you can do it uh, as a teacher and show in the class, or you can have the kids uh, folding paper also. It's just going to be a lot of paper because it's going to be two pieces each, or the teacher can do it. Okay? All right, so Wendy has uh, two cakes that are the same size. One cake is cut into half size pieces, and the other cake is cut into third size pieces. She wants to cut the cakes so they have the same size pieces. So how can she cut the cakes? All right, well, here's one cake right there. Okay, it's cut into half size pieces. And here's another cake. It's cut into three equal pieces, a third size pieces. Okay, so how can she cut each cake so they have the same size piece? All right, so a common denominator is a common multiple of the denominators of two or more fractions, okay? So remember, denominator is the bottom number, so we're going to look for something that they have in common. Okay, so you're going to need two sheets of paper, whether the teacher's going to do it for the class or, or you're going to do it uh, as a student. Okay, so step one, model uh, the cake that's cut into half size pieces. So fold one sheet of paper in half like this right here, okay? And be careful as you fold it. Try and get this corner on this corner and try and line up this corner with this corner. Make a nice fold and draw a line right down that with a pencil or a pen, okay? And then um, uh, take the second uh, piece of paper and um, and then fold that into third size pieces. So try and fold this corner so it's a about about right there ish okay it's it's uh, so you have um, uh, they're going to be equal pieces so this fold right here is supposedly going to be close enough for this fold and just try and get as close as you can you don't have to be exactly perfect okay so fold this corner right here and then this corner right here and then make this crease right here and then fold this side over okay and then draw lines on those guys right there okay so now we're going to fold each piece of paper so that both sheets have the same number of parts and the same size parts. Okay, so draw lines on the folds. Okay, can you see I can fold this paper right here that I originally folded in half. I can fold this one like I did this one into thirds. I can fold this over right about there-ish. Okay, and then draw it and then fold it and then, so there will be a crease right there and then fold this guy over and then this one I can just fold this one in half. So you're going to get something that looks like that, okay? And then so, so how many equal parts does each sheet have? Well, they each have six equal parts. See, one, two, three, and then four, five, six, okay? This one has six also, okay? So uh, uh, six is called the common multiple of both two and three. And since we started with one half and one third of a cake, uh, six was the common denominator because the two and the three were in the denominators, and uh, so we're going to look at common denominators uh, today. Okay. All right. So here's an example. Write four sevenths and one third as a pair of fractions with common denominators. I'm going to show you several methods in this lesson. And then here's one. So you can use common multiples to find common denominators, okay? And I use this one a lot uh, myself. So I'm going to list the multiples of each denominator. So I'll list multiples of 7 and multiples of 3, okay? And then uh, whichever ones they have in common, those can be used to make common denominators, okay? So here's multiples of 7. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 6, huh? You know, 42. <laughs> and then 49, okay? 3 times uh, 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4 would be 12. And then this would be 15, 18, 21, 24. So here they are right there, okay? And then the ones they have in common, you guys, are 21. So the common denominator is going to be 21. So I'm going to change 4 over 7 to something over 21 and 1 over 3 to something over 21. Okay, so that's what I have right here. So this is what you need to recognize. Uh, 7 times what number gets me 21? 
and 3 times what number gets me 21, okay? Well, uh, 7 times 3 equals 21, and 3 times 7 equals 21. So over here, whatever I multiply the denominator with, I have to multiply the numerator with. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 3 here, and over here, this one's times 7, so here I'm going to multiply 1 times 7, and those are going to be our new numerators right there, okay? All right, so you, we can rewrite um, uh, 4 over 7 and 1 over 3, as um, as 12 over 21 and 7 over 21 okay so there they are with common denominators okay all right so then they're going to ask you something like this are 4 over 7 and 1 over 3 equivalent and explain okay well if 4 over 7 equals 12 over 21 and 1 over 3 equals 7 over 21 I'm gonna say no because 12 over 21 does not equal 7 over 21 Okay, 12 over 21 does not equal 7 over 21. In fact, you guys, um, 12 uh, over 21 parts is bigger than 7 over 21 parts, you guys. Think of a rectangle divided up into 21 parts, and I shaded 12 of them. That would be bigger than a rectangle divided up by 21 parts, and I shaded only 7. So since 12 over 21 is equal to 4 over 7, and 7 over 21 is equal to 1 over 3, then 4 over 7 is greater than 1 over 3. Okay? All right, and that's probably going to be in the next lesson, the greater than parts and comparing and stuff. But right now, we're just focusing on common denominators. Another way we can show that 4 over 7 and 1 over 3 are not equivalent is to draw rectangles, you guys. So I'm going to make uh, two of the same size rectangles, and I'm going to divide this one up equally into seven rectangles, and this one up equally into one, uh, three rectangles. So it'll be it'll be my denominator seven and three. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to shade four of them, and for this one here, I'm going to shade one of them right there. Okay. When I shade those, can you see um, uh, that four over? Now these this this beginning rectangle is the same size as this beginning rectangle, but. 4 over 7 shades more of the rectangle than 1 over 3 does. So I can see uh, that 4 over 7 is greater than 1 over 3 just by the pictures right there. Okay? All right. Uh, so uh, write the pair of fractions 4 fifths and 6 tenths with a common denominator. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is um, uh, use rectangles on this example. So here are fifth size rectangles. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. Here's tenth size rectangles. I just did the same thing except sliced them in half right there. Okay, now I'm going to shade four of these to represent my four fifths, and I'm going to shade six of these to represent my uh, six tenths right there. Okay, so there's four fifths and six tenths right there. All right, now to get common denominators, all I have to do is just slice this one right down the middle and they're going to be the same size rectangles. As long as they're the same size rectangles, then they'll be common denominators. So there we go. Okay, so now we have common denominators. We just cut the red ones down the middle. So then now uh, I have these rectangles here are the same size as these rectangles here. And over here I have 4 on top and 4 on bottom. So 4 over 5 becomes 8 over 10 because there's 8 out of the 10 rectangles being shaded right here. All right, so I didn't need to change this one because I already have them in same size rectangles. So this I don't have to change this one. This just uh, stays six tenths. So four fifths and six tenths become eight tenths and six tenths with common denominators. Okay, uh, and then we're going to be adding and subtracting them uh, probably in the next lesson or two coming up. I can just feel it. All right, uh, but right now we're just comparing. So tell whether the fractions are equivalent, uh, right? Equals or not equivalent? Okay. Well, we just did this example, 4 fifths and 6 tenths on the, on the prior with the rectangles right there. But here's another way, you guys. Since uh, 5 times 2 equals 10, then i got uh, to change this fraction to be 10. i got to multiply the top and bottom by 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. So 4 over 5 is 8 over 10. And 8 over 10 definitely does not equal 6 over 10. So this one's not equal. Okay, over here, uh, I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to recognize that this 1 times 2 gets me this denominator. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2 right here. Okay, so an equivalent fraction to 1 half is 1 times 2 over 2 times 2, or 2 fourths. And 3 fourths does not equal 2 fourths right there, so that one's not equal also. Okay, over here, 
4 doesn't go into 6 evenly, so what I'm going to do is list multiples of both denominators of 4 and 6. Okay, so when I multiply uh, 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, here's 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, and can you see I have a common denominator of 12? Okay, so what I'm going to do is change this one to 12 and change this one to 12. Okay, 4 goes into 12 3 times, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by 3 over 3. 6 goes into 12 2 times, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. Okay, so here we go. So uh, 3 uh, times 3 is 9, over 4 times 3 is 12, so this side becomes 9 twelfths. And then 5, 6, I multiplied it by 2 over 2. Remember, 2 over 2 is equal to 1. Oops, that should be a 3 right there. Sorry about that. That should be a 3. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. That's a, that's a 3 right there. Okay, so uh, this is just 1 right here also, you guys. Boy, I'm glad I caught that. As you guys know, I make lots of mistakes. You guys caught them already. Okay, and then I want to see, you guys, is 9 over 12, does 9 over 12 equal 10 over 12? No, it's pretty close, but they're not equal. I mean, I'd rather have $10 than, than $9, so uh, 10 over 12 does not equal 9 over 12. As long as the denominators match up, you look at the numerators, okay? So it's not equal. Okay, let's try one more, you guys. Let's try 6 over 9 and uh, 8 over 12. Okay, on this one, you guys, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, with circles here, you guys. Look, here's two of the same size circles right here. This circle is cut up into nine equal pieces. This circle is cut up into 12 equal pieces. So for this one, I'm going to start right here since these lines start right here. Okay, I'm going to start right here on both of these. I'm going to shade six of them over here. I'm just going to put X's through them. And over here on this one, I'm going to do eight of them because this is eight twelfths and this one's six twelfths. So let me let me put X's in six of them and then X of them, eight of them. Okay, and then take a look at those. Are they equal or are they not equal? Boy, those babies look pretty equal. They are equal to each other. And you can go ahead and, and notice that uh, nine goes into 36 and 12 goes into 36 and you can change those denominators also. So those ones are equal. Okay, take care you guys.